All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming today. Um, today's a special day. It's a great day. Maybe not the weather outside, um, but it's definitely a special day in Butler football, Butler athletics, and Butler Community College history as we get to name a new head coach for this historic program. Butler football has had a long and rich tradition of success with leadership from historic and Hall of Fame coaches like Fane Henson, Dale Rimsburg, Bob Larson, Tom Saya, James Shebus, Troy Morrill, Steve Bratt, Tim Schaffner. Now, the tradition will continue and take another step forward with the 24th head coach in program history in Bryce Veneri. Bryce got his first taste of Butler football in 2006 when he showed up on campus as a freshman, as an 18-year-old from Concordia, Kansas, with the hopes of playing college football. Well, he got just that and a little bit more. Bryce lost just one game in his playing career here with the national championship. Not only did he and his team win at an extremely high level in a, a national championship, but he also got to play for two years under legendary and Hall of Fame coach Troy Morrill. Bryce transferred to Kansas State after his playing days at Butler, where he played under another Hall of Fame coach in Bill Snyder. After his playing days, Bryce returned to Butler in 2010 as a volunteer coach, living on a couch, chasing his dream to become a college football coach. He was able to learn from the absolute best in the coaching business with the likes of Troy Morrill, Steve Bratt, and Tim Schaffner, among many others, absorbing each and every day as much as he could, knowing at some point in time he would have the chance to lead a program of his own. Ladies and gentlemen, that time is now, and without further ado, I would like to introduce to you the 24th head coach of the Butler Grizzlies, Bryce Veneri. I'm still very old school. I write everything on paper, so um, I figured if I had an iPad up here, it probably wouldn't work. Um, but <clears throat> thank you to um, our administration, to Todd Carter, to Tyler Norman, to Bill Rinkenball, to Dr. Kim Kroll uh, for everything throughout this process. Um, this is kind of a kind of a dream come true for me um, coming here uh, just about 15 years ago. Um, I always knew this is something that I wanted to do, and now I get a chance to do it, and uh, I get to do it alongside uh, a great administration, a great team, uh, and great leaders and mentors to myself. So uh, thank you to you guys. Um, another thank you to my beautiful wife. Um, this, is, this has been a long journey. Um, thank you to ev for everything you've done for me. Um, to put up with me, the long hours, recruiting trips, um, even when I don't want to talk at home. Um, thank you so much. Um, to my parents, my parents made it down today. Um, without you guys, there's no, there's no chance that I'm standing here today. Um, you made me into the man, the husband um, that I am today. So thank you so much for the values that you instilled in me as a as a as a young man, and as I even as I grow up today, um, as a father, you teach me every single day. So thank you so much for for everything, and uh, the phone calls will continue, Dad, probably daily. Um, so again, thank you. So um, as we take a step into the next the next chapter of Butler football, um, I look forward to forming and creating relationships with not just the people in this room, but the people outside this room. Um, people that are so important to the success of this program, to what has made Butler what it is. Um, I was very fortunate, like Tyler said earlier, to have worked under two um, very historic coaches here at Butler. Um, and I still get to work alongside Steve Bratt. So um, those guys really showed me how to do it, uh, how to do it the right way and to care about people. Um, so. What you will see out of my team, you'll see a great pride in the game that we're going to play. Um, you come, we're going to be well represented. They're going to be well respected. We're going to play with great pride and great discipline. Um, this team will be built uh, around the core values that I grew up on, um, honesty and integrity. Um, so as we move forward and we're, you know, we're, we're busy with phone calls and texts and trips and uh, plane tickets and, and all that as we get to closer to signing day, but 
after we get past that, I invite everyone to come out and see because that's what this place has been built on and that's what we're going to continue on. Um, the mission here is, is changing young men's lives, um, making sure that they understand the end goal of what they're trying to do. That's what we're here to do. That's what uh, our calling as coaches are, um, and that's what we're going to help these, these young men do. Um, we're always going to be engaged with not just our student athletes, but the people in the community, the people at the college and around the country, because uh, Butler is a very big brand. If you ever get a chance to go to any sporting event, you wear Butler stuff, people know who you are. Um, so that brand's going to continue. Um, we're going to channel daily energy uh, into our players so we can get the best out of them, so we can make sure that when we go out there on, on August 24th to play our first game, we're taking all that energy and we're channeling it into that other team. Um, like I said in, in, in previous interviews, my, my father coached Pee Wee baseball for 20 plus years. Um, I always knew as a, as a young kid I wanted to coach, watching him um, interact with um, young players, even when I was 10 years old, just watching him coach me. And the lessons I learned, I always knew this is what I wanted to do. And as I got into athletics, my high school coach, Ron Cole, was a big influence on myself. Um, and then the other, the other coaches that you've already heard about. But I feel very fortunate for this opportunity. And um, as we move forward, I look forward to sitting down and, and meeting with all of you guys. So um, at that point, that's, that's what I have to say, I, I guess I can open it up to some questions. Uh, and I, we talked earlier in the season, I was kind of joking with you, I was like, when are you going to be head coach? You <laughs> said, not my time. What changed for you? Is it just the opportunity at Butler? That, and I had, a, I had an opportunity about a year and a half ago. Um, Hannah and I went down that road saying, is this what we want to do? Do we want to move? Um, we really enjoy it here. Um, for me to leave Butler and take another job, it had to be the job. It had to be for the right people, the right place, the right situation, and I hadn't found that yet. Um, so I knew I had a great job here. I wasn't trying to rush out of here. You know, they always say the grass isn't always greener. Um, and in this industry, you just want to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with the best people. And for me to take that leap, um, to leave here a place that I've been for a decade and my entire adult life, it had to be the right, the right situation. And um, this, this presented itself, and this is absolutely the right situation for me. Are you, being the offensive coordinator over the last few years, are you going to continue running the offense, or are you going to hire somebody to come in and do that for you so you can do more of the head coaching duties? Yeah, I'm going to hire two coordinators in the coming week um, is the plan. Um, that's, a, that's a big part of my life. I love offense. I love what we've been doing on the field the last couple years, but – um, I think I, as I step into this role, I understand that my commitments to other things to uh, per se drive the bus of the program and be the leader in the face of it. Um, I don't want that to take away from the kids, the program, and the chance to win games. So I will, I will look to hire an offensive coordinator. Is there going to be any change in philosophy of like what you like to do? Because you like to go fast. No, we're not going to change that. Yeah. So um, our statistician here will, he, he will not like that, um, but. The philosophy of what we do will not change, really, offense or defense. Um, I like what we do schematically. Um, our offense is really starting to click. We really, when we switched over a couple years ago, um, that part won't change. So it's me just finding the right guy that, that understands me, my personality, what I like to do. And um, our coaching convention's coming up, so I'll have a chance to sit and, and meet with a bunch of guys. No, <laughs> um, I think it'll finally set in when, like I said, August 24th, um, when we when we take the field. But um, to the players, it's just again the good news is I already know the players, um, so that that transition will be very easy. Um, I already know the town; that transition's been easy. I know all the people; that transition's been easy. The only transition really is moving one office to the east. Um, that's really the only transition, but. Um, it's kind of settling in a little bit. Um, when I talk to people on the phone and I tell them who I am, I, I slipped up and said my old title one time. But uh, for the most part, I think when we hit the field in August, it'll it'll finally set in. Coach, you and I had a good conversation about five or six years ago. And you expressed to me that one of your goals and your major disappointment was, I wanted, Dennis, I want to be a head coach somewhere by the age of 28. And I think my words to you were, Bryce, relax. You're okay. You're on the right path. Yep. Did you during those days? Did you sense like deep down like this day would eventually come? You'd be the head coach at Butler. No, 
I mean, I, I knew I, I might have a chance at some time. Um, and the reason I said 28 is because that's when Coach Morrill was a head coach, and I wanted to be the same, the same age as he was. Um, but that conversation has stuck with me for the last five or six years. Um, when I would get to points in my career, I would think about that conversation you and I had right down here at Beijing. I remember exactly what I was eating. Um, but it was, it was, it was very much a, a conversation I needed to have uh, with someone that I respect very much and that I've known for a long time. Um, it's really kind of guided my compass to where I kind of am right now, and I appreciate that. And but no, I didn't. I kind of thought this would happen, but you know, as the years go on and I start getting offered some jobs and talk to people, um, I never, I never knew if it would, if it would happen, but. I'm happy that it did, and I'm I'm proud to stand here today. Yeah, and follow that up, have you? I'm sure you've talked to Coach Mo. Mm -hmm. And has can you share with us what you might have told? I I called him the night it was announced. He said, "Congratulations, you can do this. Um, you you're organized. You know how to do this. And we will talk as soon as the dust settles." Um, other than that, we were just kind of catching up uh, with family right before the holiday. So um, as soon as the dust settles and signing day is over, um, I'm sure that'll be a weekly, if not bi-weekly phone call to him just for advice because uh, he's done it before. He's been a first-time head coach. I haven't. Um, and I think to have that relationship where I call him and he picks up, I think just says a lot about the man um, and what he was able to do here is, is what we're still trying to do today. Um, obviously, the landscape's changed a little bit, but um, the core values and, and all that, the old school still kind of works. Um, so we're still going to be, be that mentality for sure. What are what will be some of the differences we may see from the Schaffner era to the, the Mary era? Uh, I mean, we're completely opposite people. Um, it's the mentality of the program probably won't change much. It's more um, just my personality, I guess. Um, I just I like to I like to meet new people. I like to talk. I like to do that kind of stuff. Um, but inside these walls, not much will change. Uh, the goals are still the goals. The the offense and the defense are still the offense and the defense. So. Um, just, just those little things. Um, I color coordinate, coordinate my, my closet and my files. That's about it. So um, I'm kind of weird in that respect. What's your philosophy on recruiting? You know, there's the out of state, there's mm -hmm. the in state philosophies. How do you feel about that? Uh, you have to take care of home first. Um, taking care of the kids in the state. Me, me being one of those kids from 15 years ago that never would have got a chance without this place. We're still going to try and go out and sign the top 20 to 25 best kids in the state of Kansas. Um, our staff is not here today. They're out on the road recruiting, um, some in-state, some out-of-state. It has to be an equal balance. Um, but the number one thing with that is relationships. Being able to sit down with these kids, with these coaches. Um, uh, Coach Bratt told me one time, you walk into a building, you ask the janitor what this kid's like. Because usually the janitor is going to know what the goods and the bads and the uglies of all of it. So um, forming these relationships and... Um, being able to talk to all these people um, about these kids because, again, we're investing in these young men, and, and in order for us to invest in them, we have to make sure that they are um, the right men, the right students, and the right people we want to bring, not just into our program, but to our community, to our restaurants, to everything that, that El Dorado has. What's been the hardest transition from coordinator to head coach for you? Right now, just... When I was on the offensive side, I, I, I worried about the offense. I recruited the offense. Uh, I made phone calls. Now I'm just in charge of all of them. Um, so, you know, the, I guess you could say the workload, the calls, the texts, the emails, that kind of doubles. Um, as far as logistics stuff, it really hasn't changed much. I had a decent amount of stuff on my plate. Now there's some stuff as school starts that I will, that I will have to do and, and all that kind of stuff. But really just kind of taking a step back and seeing that I am in charge of all of them now and, and they are all looking to me for, for direction and guidance and instead of just half the team, now it's, now it's the whole team. That's been probably, as to this day, the biggest, the biggest transition. Uh, what have the players' reaction been like to you being announced as head coach? It's been great. I mean, I, I pride myself on having relationships with all the kids on the team, whether they're um, a kicker, a long, a long snapper, a linebacker, a O lineman. Um, I have my hand in recruiting and talking to a lot of these kids. So uh, I pride myself on forming relationships with all those kids because in order for those kids to go play for you, they got to be able to trust you and love you. Um, in order for you to coach them hard, they got to be able to know where you're coming from. And um, 
forming those relationships early on in the recruiting process and then when they got here has been has been key to our success for many years. Anything else? Count on me has been a slogan that's been around for a while. What's what's that mean? And what's it mean to the program? Count on me. So anytime we take role in a meeting room, we say count on me. And by saying count on me, it means you can count on me. I'm going to be on time. I'm not. You can count on me to uh, do my job. You can count on me to uh, be where I'm supposed to be. It's just a uh, reassurance to your teammates that you can count on me uh, to do my job, to be where I'm supposed to be um, and not let my teammate down. Um, and that was instilled, I think, way back in the 90s. It's, it's always been here since I was here um, and, and it's continued and it will continue as, as, as I stand here today. Coach, can you confirm to me today that you are not going to have black helmets? <laughs> I can confirm to you that we will not have black helmets. I like the golden domes. So we will not have black helmets, Dennis, I promise you. We will not have multiple numbers, Bill. So no black helmets. The kids want it, but no black helmets, as of right now. It okay. might change. <laughs> well, what about an alternate, like a white helmet? I would love to do an alternate helmet. So <laughs> Dennis is displeased. <laughs> so, but before we even get to that, we need to make sure that, that we get our team here and we get – going because the the biggest part of, of any athletics is the off season and, and developing those players and building that chemistry within that team so you're not figuring out things the fourth quarter of the first game you kind of already know how they're going to react and this and that and you can kind of get that so before we get to to uniforms and helmets we'll, we'll focus on that this will be your first spring ball in a couple of years now yes with COVID. What, yeah. will, what will that look like it'll be for a lot of these freshmen that came in during COVID. it'll be the first time they've ever had an off season um, so it'll be a lot of development going on because that's that's when we've seen the most growth in our players um, in the classroom on the field recruiting wise is in the off season because you get to just focus on the development of the player um, and they don't have to step on the field and play anybody week after week after week so um, the uh, the development of the team will will definitely come to come to shape by hopefully April 1st and then when we get on the field for spring practice it'll It'll come to shape even more, but it, this spring will be huge for, for the whole team. Anything else? All righty. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you all for coming out today. Congratulations.